We're now on our seventh screencast in the subject of parameterization. As you can see from this, this drawing I've already started, the subject now is three dimensions. I have an example in the notes, and that example is r of t, uh, k is a non-zero constant, and t will take to be any real number. This is um, parameterization of a curve known as a helix. It's essentially the shape of a spring, a coiled spring. We need to discuss it. Really, most of the discussion will be on the sketching aspect. Let me label this coordinate system x, y, z. So let's start with looking down. Suppose I were to look down on this, look down from the, the up, uh, look from above from z and look down, I would see the x, y plane. And what would I see in that plane of this curve? So let me first of all draw the x, y plane. And I actually want to draw it. To me, it seems that if I were looking down on this to relate this, this little coordinate system to what I see here looking down, I feel it's natural, so I'm going to do it that way, to put this as x and that is y. Right, so in this plane, if I, I, I don't see the z, the variation in z, all I see is this, well, you'll immediately recognize that it's a circle of radius r. So the, the curve, the three-dimensional, this three-dimensional curve, in terms of uh, if I leave out the variation in z because I can't see it because I'm looking straight down, uh, is just a circle of radius r. So it's a radius r. What that means is whatever the actual curve is, whatever the actual curve is, because it must lie on this uh, circle of radius r, it effectively must lie on a cylinder in the, in this three-dimensional space. Now I've sketched here a cylinder in anticipation of this. Perhaps not so necessary for this particular curve. This is a very useful approach to these kind of three-dimensional problems is to um, is to realize that the curve in question must lie on some relatively simple surface. We'll see that again in the next example. Just to be clear, this uh, cylinder is meant to have the same radius, radius r. Everybody got that? So this curve, um, I'll just go ahead and start. this curve, whatever it is, must lie on this cylinder. You can see I already know what it's going to be. I'm going to take that off, although I did a good job. To see that it looks like a spring, like what I just started to draw, let's now look at it from a, another 2D perspective, and let's draw another coordinates. But again, two-dimensional. Let's draw now Z, Y. So again, I'll still have Y being horizontal, and now Z. Ooh, I'm going to need a lot, much larger Z than this. So, so what does it look like in um, in this coordinate plane, the y z coordinate plane. Well, I can just read this off here. So I'm just looking at these two components, the y and the z. Well, what I'm going to do is, uh, I guess I'll just do it here. So z is equal to kt. Unfortunately, k is not equal to zero, therefore I can solve for t. t is equal to z over k. And now I have t, and I can plug it in here to y. So y is equal to r sine t, that is to say is equal to r sine z over k. Let's repeat that y. So, um, in fact, let's bring that down just a little bit more. So that then is what I want to plot over here. If I look, z, uh, y varies uh, sinusoidally as a uh, function of z. It'll start, it'll go through zero, when z is 0, y is 0, and then it'll repeat every at that point. That is now when z is 2 pi times k. So this is 2 pi k minus 2 pi k. And then the magnitude of the, of, of the oscillation is r, so I'll assume that this is roughly the same as that. So this is, I mean this, not this, not this. But when I need to do a full oscillation. That should give me some idea of where I want to hit. All right, so oh, I must have that wrong because I need to go back to zero. This point is probably not quite right. I'll just start to draw it. So 
So it's going to be sinusoidal. It's going to go to R back through zero, etc., and the other way around. But there it is. Okay, so it's sinusoidal bearing. So even now from here, you can see that you can see that this kind of this sinusoidal oscillation looks what you might expect a spring to look like if you looked at it looked at it at So maybe you didn't need all this in this particular case, but it's a useful useful approach is to to look in different um, two dimensional coordinate planes where you can probably get a better handle on what the on what the curve is. So with this in mind, I will now go and sketch the full thing. So I, I know that when Let's do when, when t is 0, then z is 0, or uh, x is 1 and y is 0. So I'm going to start here. That's where the curve is going to start. And I'm not going to worry about it getting um, uh, what's called the pitch. That is to say this distance, this distance here. Uh, exactly right. Let's just, let's just sketch something here. All right, so let's have a go. Let's start here. And I go up and around. and. I'll dash the parts here in the back, and this part's going to go back. So that's a pretty much all I think I want to say about the helix. Uh, I will just emphasize this point about the, in this case, the cylinder. So if I had a parameterization, r of t is equal to r cos t, r sine t, and then some just general function h of z, then um, whatever this h of z is, I know that in terms of uh, x and y, um, I have a circle, and therefore um, whatever this curve is, it must lie on a cylinder. So maybe I won't uh, take time to draw the coordinates on it. Um, whatever this curve is, whatever it is, it's going to lie on this cylinder. So everything is determined by what h of t is um, and is something and but whatever it is that's meant to go around and connect somehow connect up oh, I didn't do it very well but anyway you get the point this curve lies on the cylinder and knowing that deducing that um, can be very helpful often in in sketching let me just go back and correct a small mistake first of all this should have been h of t, of course, not z. And um, this curve, while well, I was just trying to indicate some general curve unspecified, it, uh, it can't actually go backwards like this. So we'll fix that. And um, well, there you go. So I just wanted to correct that. And I have one more uh, parameterization to do, and that'll be my next screencast.